In 1846, on board the research vessel the HMS Fly, British geologist Joseph Jukes recorded his impressions while anchored on the Great Barrier Reef. Colors are unrivaled. Vivid greens contrasting with more somber browns, and yellows mingled with rich shades of purple from pale pink to deep blue. In the branches of the corals, like birds among trees, floated many beautiful fish, radiant with metallic greens or crimsons, or fantastically banded with black and yellow stripes. It's impossible to know exactly what Joseph Jukes saw when he put his head underwater that sunny day in 1846. Since then, entire species may have disappeared without ever having been described by science. The coral reef ecosystem which we have inherited has undeniably been changed by human impact over the last century and a half. When you go out and first look at an ecosystem, you generally perceive that ecosystem as pristine because it's the first time you saw it. But you're not taking into account what your grandmother saw and what her grandmother saw before that. Shifting baselines is a, is a very useful concept for scientists to, to understand the degree of degradation over significant intervals of time. The challenge is how do we get around that shifting baseline syndrome? How do we get around the fact that no single scientific career, no single human lifetime can actually uh, encompass more than a few decades of looking at you know, coral reefs and their, and their degradation. Those working on coral reefs are particularly disadvantaged. The longest in-depth study of a single coral reef is less than 50 years old, a time frame too short to gain a true understanding of the full extent of the cycles of change that can occur within the natural environment. So how do we determine what is pristine? Scientists have a wealth of research tools to reconstruct what these natural ecosystems would have looked like and how they functioned. We have historical records over several different scales of time. Paleontologically, we can go into the rock record, we can go look at fossils, and they might tell us about the community composition of the corals or the clams and snails. They might give us an inkling into what the coral reef looked like thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago. Uh, we could also go to archaeological sites. We can piece together a history the kinds of fish that they were eating, how big those fish were, and at what point in time they shifted from one fish to another. In the last couple of centuries, we've got government fisheries data through time that give us an idea of, of what different uh, fish stocks were doing through time. So one can piece together the, all these kinds of information to develop a, an understanding of how the world's coral reefs have actually uh, declined through time. This data also reveals a pattern of degradation that is directly related to our development as a modern, civilized society. There's a really nice example about how human modification has changed the composition of reefs in uh, just close to Brisbane here in Moreton Bay. By dating these corals, we can actually get radiometric age dates of these. We know how old they are. We know that the branching corals stopped living in the bay about 150 years ago which corresponds to European colonization of the southeast Queensland coastline. So what we have is a dramatic example of a correlation between European colonization and the total reorganization, the total uh, transformation of the coral reef. The link between humans and the degradation of the reefs is illustrated even without the passage of time. In remote reef areas, the total mass of living organisms supported by reefs is up to five times greater than that which is found on populated islands. It is a fact that there is no reef system in the world which is not impacted by humans in some way. And that means that even the most pristine reef has a baseline, its basic existence, which has been shifted and changed by human impact. I first visited a reef about 20 years ago and at that point the reefs looked beautiful to me and within a short period of just eight years those reefs uh, were affected by a massive coral bleaching event in 1998 and I've watched those reefs deteriorate ever since and so my research is really motivated by trying to understand what causes these declines in reef health and asking what can we do to prevent this. One of the problems that we face actually is that um, many people visit reefs which are actually in, in a fairly degraded state and yet don't realize that and still have a good experience which is which is great for them but it does mean it's difficult um, to generate public support for trying to improve the health of reefs. 
The Coral Watch program is a good example of one of the ways the public can support monitoring the baseline of reefs. Anyone with access to a reef can use the Coral Watch color chart to collect data about a reef's health and upload the information for the public and researchers around the world to see. Through monitoring programs like this, we can create a picture of local and global patterns of bleaching and recovery across time. We're trying to place the modern system in the context of the history of that degradation so that then people can be aware of it and they can make prudent decisions based upon that, that temporal context. Mm -hmm.